Kuba on his way into exile to Gabon. The family of Mamor Diara commemorated that saintly man at Bakkehewar. His portrait in this news bulletin. At least 20,000 tons of supplies at the disposal of the farming community, an action from the government of Senegal. On the international in Guinea Conakry, authorities are taking radical actions to stand in the Ebola's way. Anytime, anyway, on any device. Al Muridia Television, from Tuba to the World, the news bulletin. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on Al Muridia Television for your news bulletin. The religious events in the holy city of Stuba. The Murid community celebrated the Magal of Makkebari, a religious event that commemorates the departure of Sheikh Ahmad Bamba into exile, a mystical and mythical place in the itinerary of Sheikh Ahmad Bamba on his way to exile. Babakar Nur. Venerated Sheikh Ahmad Bamba took his leave of his family and disciples to respond to the summoning of the colonial governor in St. Louis, Senegal. This Magal commemorates that departure into exile of Sheikh Ahmad Bamba on that morning of August 10th, 1895. It has been celebrated since 2001 under the Caliphate of Surin Salim Bake and under the guidance of the current caliph of Surin Sheikh Chorumbake, namely Surin Sheikh Joren Bake. As a matter of interest, Bake Bay was founded about 1700 by Imam Maharam Bake. Hundred years after, it has been rehabilitated by Sheikh Ahmad Bamba, who stayed there for five months before his departure into exile. In 1964, Serin Fal Mbake rehabilitated it again. Since then on, Mbake Bari is under the full and entire responsibility of the family of Serin Sheikh Chorombake. Another religious event, the family of Mamor Jara, the elder brother of Sheikh Amur Bamba, was commemorated last Tuesday at Bakkehewar. His portrait drawn here by Papa Sanjiv again. Sheikh Muhammad Jaram Bake was born in 1848 in Bakebaul, elder son of Serin Muhammad Antasali and Sohna Jarabuso. He is the elder brother of Sheikh Ahmadu Bamba Khadim Rasul, founder of Muridism. Sheikh Muhammad Jara has been very soon initiated to studying the Quran by his father, a widely read and skillful teacher. It's under his guidance that Muhammad Jara perfectly memorized the Holy Quran and deepened his knowledge. Under the supervision of his uncle, Serin Busobe, he mastered the basic religious and instrumental sciences. What attests to the soundness of his quality training is the number of the important number of prominent persons trained under his auspices. Among them, we can name Sheikh Masambambake, Sheikh Antambake, Serin Afembake, and Serin Muhammad Fadel Mbake, second caliph of Murids. The nobility of Serin Muhammad Jara was well known a quality which made of him discourse of the needy. He was compassionate and tender-hearted towards everybody. He was a great worshipper of God. Sheikh Muhammad Jara, the elder brother of our Sheikh, is one among those who would perform nocturnal optional prayers and recite very often the Holy Quran, and whose will consists in 100 genuflections, Raka, Serin Basirum Bakid said. Mahmoud Jara has always favored the status of a disciple of Sheikh Ahmad Bamba rather than the birthright. In that master disciple relationship, he would receive recommendations from the Sheikh, then into exile in Gabon, and carry them out perfectly. When he came back from exile in 1902, and in all the different places where Sheikh Ahmad Bamba had stayed, he would pay him courteous visits and make pious donations to him. He departed this world in 1922 and lies next to his uncle Serin Busobe in Bake under the recommendation of Sheikh Ahmadou Bamba. Nowadays, his grandson Serin Abibula in Bake, patriarch of Bake Khawar, is the caliph of his family. The, the final touch of this celebration was an official ceremony chaired by the caliph Serin Abdullah Mbake Yalaibu in the presence of Mr. Manyingjai at the head of an important delegation. 
the high points of a celebration with Pap Asandu. The official ceremony in the late evening put an end to the celebration of this year's edition of the Magal of Mahmoud Jarambake. Mr. Mbanyik Njai, Minister of Culture at the head of an important delegation, was the bearer of the message of President Makisal. He solicited from the religious authorities to formulate prayers for Senegal in general and the head of the state in particular. The minister assured the family of Bromsam of the deference and consideration President Makisal and the state authorities have for them. The spokesman of the family, Serin Sheikhun Ambake, centers mainly his speech around censoring the behavioral deviation of Muslims. He vigorously criticized the detractors of Islam who spend all their time trying to bring it into disrepute. Now, let us talk about the home news. The government of Senegal plans on putting about 20,000 tons of supplies at the disposal of the farming community, a bold action to anticipate future food scarcity. Baba Karndo reports on. The government plans on putting 41,000 tons of suppliers at the disposal of the farming community so as to anticipate future food scarcity due to this long pluviometrical break. An honest man made by the quartermaster Colonel Alimar, head of Food Security Commissariat. More than 675,000 people will benefit from it. For the time being, 2,137 tons of rice from the 20,000 tons available have been brought to the valley as the first passage. Besides, 20 trucks or so that will bring the supplies to their reasons are waiting to be loaded up. Once the food relief received, the local administrative authority will proceed to their distribution to the needy. According to the quartermaster Colonel Arimar, all the loaded up trucks are due to reach their destinations by Friday, 15th August. Thank you very much, Mr. Babakar Noor. Another home news. The Association for the International is bustling about the preservation of the environment. These young men from the southern part of Senegal mean to battle against deforestation. Dr. Armandou covered their press conference. Presentation and the pre-evaluation of the project Forêt de la Paix. To make the environment be at the service of peace, is the initiative of the International Forest Association. Taking into account the fact that natural resources are infinite, the environment belongs to mankind and the consequences of strong pressures of man on the nature are unbalanced. Young people of Quran village at Binyona with the authorities and the inhabitants of that village developed a project on peace through actions on the environment in order to bring a symbolic contribution to the peace process in Casamance by planting trees on some spaces of the exploited forest. The Forêt de la Paix project in its citizenship actions in the village of Kuram has allowed people to plant to 1,000 trees in an area which deforestation was caused by the conflict and the inhabitants moving. The project also runs some renewable energies in order to promote public and energy policies of sustainable development as well as fight against any kind of noisance so as to protect also the littoral zone against coastal erosion and also eradicate the ground sanitization. Thank you very much, Dr. Adam Adjouf. Now let us see what's happening on the international. Authorities in Guinea are taking radical action to fight the spread of the deadly Ebola virus. Security forces in the capital of the West African state have demolished the shanty town following the declaration of a public health state of emergency. It comes after President Alpha Conde said cleanliness was key to fighting the outbreak that's killed more than 1,000 people in three countries across the region. 
Unsurprisingly, the move has not been welcomed by locals. Why are they doing this to us? We're Ghanaian, we're not foreigners here. Why all this? Because of Ebola? Leave us so that Ebola can kill us, but don't move us from here, cried this man. An estimated 377 people have died in Guinea since the world's worst outbreak of Ebola began in March. Guinea says the disease is now under control, but new measures are needed to prevent further infection from other countries at the center of the epidemic. A new five-day ceasefire between Israel and Hamas looks set to come into force. Hamas delegates in Cairo for indirect peace talks say a fresh deal has now been made. The Egyptian delegation brokering the negotiations has confirmed that an agreement between Israel and Hamas has been reached. It comes as Israel claims a rocket has been fired from Gaza into the south of the country. Hamas was quick to deny any such attack. The group's spokesperson, Sami Abu Zuhuri, posted on social media, Hamas denies firing any rockets towards Israel this evening. Britain has released footage of an airdrop of humanitarian supplies to Iraqis fleeing from Islamic State fighters. The Ministry of Defense says the video taken from a tornado jet shows a Royal Air Force Hercules plane dropping supplies over Iraq's Mount Sinjar. It comes amid reports in Britain's Telegraph newspaper that the UK has deployed special air service forces to gather intelligence in the area alongside US troops. Germany too has been sending humanitarian aid expected to arrive in Iraq on Friday evening. Germany's Defence Minister Ursula von der Leyen says the government also plans to send non-lethal military aid such as vehicles, helmets, night vision gear and bomb detectors. The medical relief, food and blankets is just the start, she said. We're preparing to send additional material as and when the need arises, she added. On Wednesday, the United Nations declared the situation a level three emergency, its highest level of humanitarian crisis. Death in a shipping container. 35 apparent illegal immigrants have been found in a container at a port in southeast England, and one of them, a man, was dead. Police say the group from the Indian subcontinent, and including women and children, was sealed inside the container, which had just arrived on a transporter from Zeebrugge in Belgium. Staff here at the port became aware of screaming and banging coming from a container uh, from uh, that particular ship or that particular ferry. Um, as a result uh, of uh, that noise, obviously staff were alerted and immediately breached the container to find 35 persons within that unit. The 34 who were alive inside the container were treated at local hospitals for severe dehydration and hypothermia, which were not life-threatening. Police say they're treating the man's death as homicide. They also searched the 50 or so other containers on the same ship. Thank you very much. That was your today's news bill time. Anytime, anywhere, on any device. That's Al Muridia Television. Goodbye. News.